In this clip, we see the blast shockwave from the detonation of a 4,000-pound M56 blockbusting bomb. The detonation's intense white light lasts 0.003 seconds, and white-hot steel casing fragments are projected outward at a speed of Mach 9.4. A total of 1,220 of these bombs were deployed in World War II. These bombs were only deployed in the Pacific Theater, and they were the largest bombs carried by 21st Bomber Command's B-29s during World War II. On June 9, 1945, 21st Bomber Command dispatched 44 B-29s to attack the Aishi Aircraft and Engine Works factories located in the Japanese city of Nagoya. This mission was unique as it was one of the few attacks where B-29s dropped these 4,000-pound blockbusting bombs. The intent of this video is to review the destructive power of these bombs, review the June 9th strike mission to Nagoya, and review the damage caused by these weapons. This image shows the various sizes of World War II bombs. The M56 4,000-pound bomb is highlighted here. The bomb is so heavy, ground crews needed special bomb cradles and tracks to transport the bomb to the B-29 bomb bays, as seen in these images. This image shows the maximum internal loadout for the B-29. A B-29 can carry up to four M56 bombs within its bomb bays. This image shows the B-29's hoist system and the location of the bombs on the bomber's rack shackle. The bombs are shaded here. This is the bomber's communication tunnel. M-56 is loaded in the B-29's aft bomb bay. B-29's releasing M-56's over Japan. A B-29 releasing two M-56's. Size of the bomb in comparison to a human. This page from a 1945 Bomb and Fuses document outlines characteristics and a cutaway of the M56 bomb. The bomb's length is 117 inches, diameter 34 inches, and wall casing thickness at 0.37 inches. Its weight equates to 4,205 pounds when filled with 3,362 pounds of TNT. That's 65% the explosive fill of a British tall boy. However, unlike the tall boy, the M56 is not designed for penetration at detonation. It is designed to detonate at impact. Its 0.37 inch thick wall casing thickness is too thin for the bomb to maintain its structural integrity during any significant target penetration. This is why the bombs are called LC, or a light case bomb. The bomb's fusing is always set for an instantaneous detonation, no time delay. Damage from this bomb is from its blast effect, not earth shock, not incendiary, not fragmentation. Damage is from the peak pressure traveling in front of its blast shock wave and impulse experienced during detonation. This image from a 1945 terminal ballistics document outlines a housing block damage sustained from the detonation of bombs of various sizes. The damage to the structure from an M56 4,000 pound light case bomb is shaded here. It is totally destroyed 120 feet from the detonation site and visible damage extends to 265 feet. This map from a 1947 USSBS document outlining bomber attacks on Nagoya shows the location of Nagoya on the island of Honshu. Nagoya is 1,265 miles from Tinian, the location of the Strike Force's 313th Bombardment Wing. Nagoya is responsible for 35-45% to 45 of Japan's aircraft engine output from this August 1944 bulletin. This map identifies the location of Nagoya's principal industries by symbol. The two Aishi engine and aircraft plant targets are located here. This map outlines industrial target footprints in the Nagoya area from a May 1945 Joint Target Group document. The two targets are identified as Target 198, the Aishi Aircraft Works Plant, and Target 2010, the Aishi Engine Works. Although both plants were targeted by the bombers on June 9th, this video will focus on the plant damage from the M56 bombs which struck the Engine Works plant. This plant is the center of engine production as discussed on this page from a 1945 21st Bomber Command tactical mission report. The engine plant produces inline engines used in the Judy dive bomber like seen in this image. This page describes why blockbusting M56 bombs were selected. The ordnance was selected to induce the most damage with the minimum number of bombers. The structure is most vulnerable to blast damage. The M56 4,000 pound light case bombs were designed to produce the highest blast pressures given their high explosive fill weight to overall weight ratio. Bomb fusing was set for an instantaneous time detonation. Three M56s were loaded to each of the 44 3 13th Bombardment Wings B-29s dispatched to attack the two Aishi targets. This table summarizes the results of the attack. 156 bombs were released on target. 
30% of the bombs struck within 1,000 feet of the aim point, which is considered fair accuracy. Both targets were heavily damaged. The Aishi Aircraft Works Plant was 96% destroyed or damaged, and the Aishi Engine Works Plant was 52% destroyed or damaged. We can label the percentage target destroyed or damaged from this rate on this map. Use of the 4,000-pound bombs was so unique and significant, the USSBS sent special teams to the targets to evaluate their combat effectiveness. The results of this evaluation are documented in this 1947 USSBS document titled, The Effect of the 4,000-Pound Bomb on Japanese Targets. Of the 156 and 56 bombs released on the two Aishi plants, only four bombs struck the engine plant. The strike locations are shown here on this map, labeled 1 through 4. Bomb 1 struck the north part of Building 17. This table lists the plant's building numbers from 1 to 27, function of each building, building plan area in thousands of square feet, bomb number which caused damage, distance from near miss or direct hit, and area damaged. Bomb 1 struck the north part of Building 17, a machine shop. The bomb detonated two feet below the roof truss. 33,200 square feet of the building was structurally damaged and another 62,000 square feet superficially damaged. This image shows the location of Bomb 1's detonation from an overhead and side view. The bomb burst around 15 feet above the ground. This area was destroyed by the blast and this area sustained superficial damage. In addition to Building 17, Bomb 1 also damaged Buildings 14, 20, and 21. We can color code the buildings affected by Bomb 1. This image shows the location of Building 17 with its sawtooth roof. Image of Building 17's destruction from Bomb 1 and a view of Building 17's machine shop. Although the report indicates Building 17 was structurally damaged, it appears to be completely destroyed. Since it was an above-ground detonation, no crater was formed. Building 17's drill press damage from Bomb 1. This map shows the location of Building 17's machine tools relative to Bomb 1's detonation location. The concentric circles are spaced 20 feet apart. 88% of the machine tools within a 40-foot radii of Bomb 1's detonation site were destroyed. Bomb 2 was a ground detonation that struck 10 feet from Building 16 and 21 feet from Building 15. These are cross-section views of Building 15 and 16. Bomb 2's crater size was 40 feet in diameter. In addition to Building 15 and 16, Bomb 2 also damaged Buildings 1, 2, 3, 4, 14, 17, 19, and 20. Bomb 2's detonation ruptured a gas line and the gas ignited. Most of the damage from Bomb 2 was a combination of both blast and fire. This image shows the eight damaged building locations from the Bomb 2 strike. This image shows Bomb 2 strike location relative to buildings 15, 16, and 1. Everything is wiped out in the view. Building 17's north end damage from blast and fire from Bomb 2. More images of Building 17's north side blast and fire damage from Bomb 2. Bomb 3 was a ground strike at the plant's fence line. The bomb damaged buildings 2, 3, and 4. The buildings damaged from Bomb 3 are shaded. This image shows a cross-section of buildings 2, 3, and 4, with the damage listed as blast and fire. Buildings 2, 3, and 4 relative to Bomb 3's strike location. Bomb 4 struck Building 5 and detonated on its floor. It developed a ground crater 45 feet in diameter. In addition to Building 5, Building 6, 7, 8, 9, 19, 20, and 27 were damaged from this blast. These structures are shaded on this map. This image shows the bomb's detonation location at the floor of Building 5, a light casting shop. Building 5 is fabricated from wood, which is likely the reason the fuse was not triggered on the roof. There was no fire from this strike. Bomb 4 strike and crater location in Building 6. What remains of Building 6? This page summarizes the results of the attack. Bombs 1, 3, and 4 caused blast damage alone. Bomb 2 struck a gas main and caused both blast and fire damage. The corrugated side and roofing materials were very vulnerable to blast damage. This led to damage far away from the detonation site. Only four 4,000-pound blockbusting bombs struck the plant, damaging 123,000 square feet of building area. The attack damaged 80 aircraft cylinder heads in manufacture, 20 completed blocks, and 100 crankshafts. 32 of the 150 machine tools were destroyed. The cost of the attack was estimated at 500,000 yen. The June 9th attack killed 201 workers and wounded another 68. This was due to a premature, all-clear warning announcement. 
Overall, the M56 is considered an excellent weapon based on plant damage assessments. It is very effective against steel frame buildings. Its combat effectiveness is greater than any other size general purpose bomb, especially for large plant targets. If you have found this Blockbuster Bomb Attack Deep Dive Case Study Review interesting and informative, please consider supporting the channel by commenting, liking, and or subscribing to World War II U.S. Bombers.